Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to my newly rebranded series, Feats IRL, the show where I use real life science and math to figure out just how impressive the feats of fictional characters really are. I know it's been a while since I uploaded, and this isn't going to be a huge video, but I figured I'd give those of you who've stuck around a little something for staying with me all this time. So today, we're going to be looking at the time that Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong knocked the moon into the earth. This feat occurs at the very end of Donkey Kong Country Returns, and consists of DK and or Diddy getting blasted into space, and then, on their way back down, striking the moon so hard that it crashes down into DK Island. Now the first step in calculating this is figuring out how big the moon is, which can most simply be done by comparing it to the size of DK Island. However, this is a little trickier than it seems at first glance, as the island you see in this cutscene isn't the actual island itself. Rather, this is the overworld map of DK Island, hence the huge, exaggerated landmarks. However, while this isn't the actual island, it is still an accurate map, which means we can use it to find the size of the real island. And the method for doing this is actually quite simple. If you go over here to the very start of the game, you see DK's house, which is right next to this blue circle, which you click on to enter the level. And if you go into this level, you'll notice that you start off right next to DK's house. This is actually very significant, as this shows that the blue circle on the overworld map represents where you start the level, which means that the distance between the first circle and the second circle represent the length of that first level itself. As such, in order to figure out how long this distance is on the overworld map, all we have to do is go into the level itself and measure how long it is. Which I did! After taking over 50 screenshots and laying them out end over end, I found the length of the level. And by comparing that length to Donkey Kong's height, I found that the total length of the level is about 488.5 meters, or about 0.3 miles. Now that we know the length of the level, it means that we also know the length of this portion of the overworld map, which we can use to figure out the size of everything else on the map. Having done so, I found that the size of the island in this cutscene is over 10,000 meters, or 6.25 miles, which means that the width of the moon is over 16,500 meters, or 10.26 miles. With that information, we can calculate its volume, and assuming it has the same density as the real life moon, we can find that the mass of the DK moon is over 7.8 quadrillion kilograms, or about 8.6 trillion tons. Alright, that's one part of the puzzle solved. The only other information we need to calculate this feat is how fast the moon was traveling after DK and or Diddy struck it. Velocity is a factor of distance and time, so first we need to know how high up in the sky the moon was before it was struck. The DK moon is clearly not anywhere near as high up as the real life moon, as DK and Diddy reached this moon in a matter of seconds when they were blasted into space. As such, the absolute minimum height it could be orbiting at is what is known as the Kármán line, or the height at which outer space officially begins. This height is about 100 kilometers or 62 miles above sea level. We now have the distance, so now all we have to find is time. Upon reviewing the cutscene in which this feat occurs, I found that, from the moment that the moon started traveling downwards to the moment it hit the island, about two seconds passed. Which is pretty nuts! That means the moon crashed into the planet at 50,000 meters per second, which is over 145 times the speed of sound. But more importantly, we now have both the mass and the velocity of this moon, which we can plug into the kinetic energy formula to figure out just how hard DK and or Diddy hit the moon. Upon doing so, we find that they would have had to have impacted the moon with over 9.8 septillion joules. That is equivalent to 2 billion, 356 million, 536 thousand, 806 point nine megatons of TNT. For context, that is literally over 23 times the energy of the meteor impact that wiped out the dinosaurs. And DK pulled this off with one punch. That's right, Donkey Kong, a freaking gorilla in a necktie, is a walking, talking extinction event waiting to happen. He could literally punch the ground beneath his feet and wipe out all life on the planet. But we're not done just yet. Don't think I forgot about you, Diddy Kong. 
In an alternate version of this moon feat, instead of DK punching the moon, you'll have Diddy crashing into it. In this version of events, Diddy has no active role in the feat. Instead, his jetpack malfunctions and suddenly accelerates Diddy to humongous speeds before crashing him into the moon, which is enough of an impact to knock the moon into the earth. This is a significant difference, and one that I actually rather like. DK was always the strongest Kong, while Diddy was always the fastest, so having DK use his strength to move the moon while having Diddy use his speed is a really cool way to play into their unique strengths. But I digress. Point is, Diddy's version of this feat doesn't involve strength so much as it involves his jetpack using Diddy as a battering ram. Which raises the question, how fast would Diddy have to be flying in order to generate the kinetic energy needed to crash the moon? Well, if we go back to our kinetic energy formula, we already have the energy involved, as we just calculated it. So all we have to do is plug in Diddy's weight, and we should have his velocity. Diddy Kong is a spider monkey, and while he's a bit more rotund than most members of his species, he's actually about the correct height, standing around 3 feet and 8 inches tall. Most male members of his species generally weigh around 17 pounds, but we'll round upwards and assume he weighs around 20 pounds. But then there's also the weight of his jetpack. For the purposes of this, I'll assume he wouldn't carry around a jetpack that weighs as much as he does, and so I'll assume it only weighs 15 pounds at most. With that in mind, the total weight of Diddy and his jetpack upon impacting the moon was around 35 pounds, or 15.9 kilograms. And now, if we plug that weight into the kinetic energy formula, we can find the speed he'd have to be impacting at in order to crash the moon into the planet. And it turns out, he'd have to be impacting at 2 trillion 493,071,156,943 point five miles per hour. That is literally over 3,717 times the speed of light. Holy cow. I think I can safely say that is the most impressive spider monkey speed feat I've ever seen. That is bonkers fast. Although it does explain how he's able to appear in three places at once during his final smash in Smash Ultimate. When you move faster than light itself, appearing to be in multiple places simultaneously is totally something you can do. And that's the feat calculated. We found that Donkey Kong could wipe out all life with one punch, and Diddy Kong is the spider monkey equivalent of the Flash. If that isn't crazy enough, consider that it takes the entire Kong family to beat this guy. Have fun with that thought, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Hey guys, thanks for watching this, and thanks for sticking around despite my lack of uploads. I've got some larger projects that I'm working on, but in the meantime, I'm hoping to keep y'all entertained with a series of short videos analyzing feats like this. I hope you guys like this sort of content. Anywho, here's a teaser image hinting at what my next Feats IRL video will be about. I wonder how many people will be able to guess the feat. Regardless, like if you enjoyed the video, comment if you got something to say, subscribe if you want to see more, and as always, have a fantastic day.